What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly edifying episode of The Center Beacon. In this video, we discuss how to start a successful clan. Let's take a quick look at three keys to success that I've identified in my own experience with my clan, 1,000 Skulls. So obviously, the clan leader is the most important feature. Next, we need a dedicated group of core players. This is the backbone of your clan. And finally, you need to be fun but serious. So what we're going to do here is take a closer look at each one of these keys while watching my clan wreck some shop. So anyone can start a clan, right? You can pretty much just press the button and pay your 1500 gold and boom, you are the proud owner of the latest 999th ranked clan in the world. But I don't think people realize how hard it is. It is at once equal parts savage enjoyment and utter rage. So here are some of our top-notch players, minus myself, of course. I'm not really sure why they keep me around. But we're about to drop on Moon Map. And one of the first topics that we're going to discuss in this video is the most obvious, the one that you don't need a video for, but that's the clan leader. Being a clan leader is kind of like being a father, a minister, and a drill sergeant all in one. Some of my buddies in 1KS have explained it to me that the clan leader is basically the glue that holds the whole thing together. And I think that that is true in real life as well as on, you know, any online, you know, gaming situation or whatever it is. If, if someone's in charge, they have to be in charge and they have to kind of set the tone and the standard for everybody else. And sometimes when I'm away from the game for a while due to real life stuff or, you know, whatever, bus whatever business is going on in your personal life, you can kind of feel the effects, you know. Players miss you, the, you know, clan doesn't run quite as smoothly in it, and it's not because I'm some sort of, like, super person. It's just that you don't have that steady guiding hand there. So if you're going to jump into starting a clan, you have to make sure that you have the time and the dedication to sometimes even put things aside in your real life to make sure that your online one is taken care of. So the biggest piece of advice I can give to a new clan leader is to just try to maintain a steady, easygoing presence. If you're too firm-handed, you're going to piss people off and drive them away. And if you're too lax with things, uh, you're going to have a clan full of people that, you know, aren't really pulling in the same direction because it's a team effort at the end of the day. Next up, we're going to talk about your dedicated core players. Every good leader needs a core of officers around him. Uh, you need your posse, you know, you need your blood riders. These are the guys that have your back and they basically help spread your message to the rest of the clan. They help magnify uh, your leadership, you know, your vision for where the clan needs to go. For a new clan leader, when you're going to start one of these things up, I would recommend that you have a solid group of 6 to 10 dependable players that have your back in order to form that really solid nucleus. Uh, without that, you are going to run into a lot of problems long term because as you'll see, once you go down the path of leading your clan and, and managing the day to day, things don't always go like you think they will and there's a lot of stuff that goes wrong you lose a lot of players people get pissed off there's drama inevitably as much as you try to minimize it and it will be a thorn in your side and if you don't have these guys that have your back and are helping you to keep everything in order as much as humanly possible you're going to have a much more difficult time third and final key to success for all you new clan leaders out there, you want to keep things fun but serious. I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, well, we're just doing a clan for fun and, you know, it's just some friends and we're just going to have a fun time with it and we don't care if we win or whatever. I would kind of, I would kind of tell you that that's, that's kind of BS. I've seen it firsthand. Uh, people hate losing. It's human nature. Losing sucks. And if you keep your clan too light and too fun and things are, you know, too much, uh, you know, rainbows and sprinkles and puppy dogs and everything, people are eventually, they're going to get ticked off. They're, they're not going to see the wins. They're not going to, you know, amass resources. They're not going to advance in league standing. And they're going to go elsewhere because at the end of the day, it's a competitive game and you have to treat it as such. And if you don't, I've seen it, you know, happen a couple of times. It is not going to hold up long term. Yes, you can still have fun 
one. Yes, people can get along. No, you do not have to be some sort of iron-fisted warlord, but you do need to focus on winning games and improving your team play, your tactics, your communication, everything that goes along with just simply winning a match and somehow managing to balance having a good time. You know, I've been a clan leader for well over a year in uh, two different clans, and I can tell you it is not is not easy. It is not an easy tightrope to walk consistently with all of the drama that ensues and all of the different things that happen along the way. It's much easier said than done. So you might be sitting back and saying, oh, Warlock, you're taking it too seriously and it's just a game. And you're right, it is just a game. But when you're losing all the time, it is a significantly less fun game. So uh, there's really no magic bullet here. There's no magic formula. The, the closest thing that you can get, the simplest way that I can explain it, is winning makes it a hell of a lot more fun. And in order to win at the highest levels of competition in this game, with the competitors that are out there, the other amazing clans that are out there, you have to take it seriously. So, you know, it's it's kind of like a circle. You know, if you're taking it seriously and you're training and you're improving your play, you're winning, thus you're having fun. And then that cycle renews. And you have got to feed into that. You've got to teach that to your members. You've got to kind of preach that. The easiest way to have fun is to win. When everyone's winning, everything's great. Everything's hunky-dory. Attitudes are better. You know, the, the games are more fun. The, the comm chatter can be lighter. But you have got to practice. You have got to drill. You have got to have all of your players on the same page. And I am fortunate enough to have a, a pretty hefty contingent of really top-tier players. Uh, guys that have a lot of skill, far better players than myself, and they help me by training our new guys, training some of our guys that are, you know, they're good players, but they're not yet great players. And like you can see in this video, we drill this technique all the time. On this map, this is a very effective strategy, as you'll see here in a minute, if you get a crossfire on the enemy's spawn point, you are going to dominate this map. You can see uh, here in a second, I'm going to have some buddies coming through the middle, and I'm over here just, you know, really pissing people off on the side of the uh, spawn here of, for the enemy. And once you get the enemy in this crossfire, there is not a lot they can do. You know, you can see we've got the beacons, we've got the beacon bar advantage, and they have to fight their way out of spawn instead of going and trying to get this beacon bar back in their favor. And this doesn't happen by accident. We drill it, we train it, you know, we practice it, and then we teach it to our new guys. We go over it, and that's the kind of dedication you need to have. That's the kind of seriousness that I'm talking about. You can have a good time, it can be fun, but you have got to be serious about it. Because the easiest way to have fun is to win. Okay, everybody still with me? Excellent. No one rage quit, so that's good. Now we're going to talk about some additional concerns branding and we're going to go into detail in the next clip so we're going to talk about branding we're going to talk about comms communications social media i know it's the devil but a necessary evil artwork and finally we will take potpourri for 500 alex i'm just kidding we're going to look at activity versus skill so now let's take a look at another clip of me camping and my clan brothers doing all the work. I mean, uh, me leading all of my clan mates into a uh, glorious battle. So branding, what do I mean by that? You know when you join a fraternity and your frat brothers talk you into getting like an Omega symbol branded on your arm with a red hot coat hanger? This isn't that. Branding for our purposes is basically going to be what you call your clan, what your clan tag is going to look like. Branding is also going to tie into a couple things we're going to talk about later, like social media and artwork. The main takeaway is that nobody wants to be in a clan with a dumb name. So if you name your clan something like Dark Death Dealers of Dark Death, you are not as likely to attract the kind of player that you want as if you had named your clan something cool and attractive. Some of the clan names out there that I like are The Pride, Iron Smiles, Vox. These guys have good names and good tags that make sense, and it basically makes people want to be a part of them. So get your branding right. Next, we're going to talk about comms. Comms are important for a couple of reasons. Obviously, they're critical to in-game communication. They help you play better coordinate your efforts on the battlefield. But a second and kind of lesser known or maybe lesser realized benefit of using comms is you actually get to talk to the people that are in your clan. You get to know them, you can kind of BS and have fun, and you get to know personalities a lot better than you do through text or on Facebook or whatever social media that you're using. My favorite comms app is Discord, but there are plenty to choose from. Social media is the devil, Bobby Boucher. Yes, it is, mama. I hate it. 
It's where we all go to pretend we're something we're not, basically brag about ourselves, and hope for lots of likes. Unfortunately, much like soft jazz, it is a necessary evil in today's modern online world, and it can help you get your clan off the ground and help to keep it organized. So I do recommend you go out and get yourself a Facebook page, set up a website is very helpful. You can use Facebook Messenger. I prefer Line. It's a nice little uh, chat texting app that works pretty well. But there are a lot of options out there. You need to explore them and find out what's going to work best for your clan. So here's where we're going to separate the Cossacks from the Griffins. We are going to talk about artwork. You got to have some skills when it comes to artwork. Skills pay the bills, as they say. The internet, video games, so on and so forth, it's, it's a visual medium. It's a visual world, and the better that you can harness that to your advantage to help promote your clan, be it through flyers or Facebook postings or whatever it is, it needs to be visual, so you're going to have to have somebody or acquire the skills yourself to do this art for you. Now, fortunately, I have a marginal degree of skill uh, when it comes to 2D art, thanks to my time as a graffiti artist, but uh, if you don't have that capability, you're going to have to either learn it or have somebody that already has it and can do it for you in your clan, or you're going to have to buy it. Finally, we come to something I call activity versus skill. This is my own personal philosophy on which type of clan you're going to run. Some people play the game a whole lot. They're not very good at it. And I know a lot of other guys that uh, they only get to jump on a couple times a week and they're awesome absolutely lethal pilots and personally uh, for my clan I would rather have the guy that gets on a few nights a week and doesn't play all that much but who knows what he's doing who is a good teammate as opposed to the guy that just plays a ton as we all know uh, just because you're the number one ranked clan on whatever platform it doesn't mean you're the best clan it just means you play a lot so figure out which type of clan you want to run I'd rather have the type of guy that gets on because he wants to play and not because he's forced to to maintain a trophy count so that's it as you guys know I don't really like to hype my clan on my channel. I don't really go in for that sort of thing. I don't do a lot of advertising. You know, I'm not trying to uh, basically leverage my channel to promote my clan or anything. I've never been about that. Probably never will be about that and refuse to do it. Now you have all of the keys to start your own clan. Should be great. And just, you know, try not to self-promote. Oh, hey, Natasha. What's that? Uh, yeah, let's talk about this later.